Hello, my name is Suzanne Keenest brown and I'm a soil scientist and national GIS specialist with NRCS at the National Soil Survey Center. I'm a co-lead for the Digital Soil Mapping Focus Team along with Jessica Phillip of NRCS and Jim Thompson of WVU. And today I'm going to talk about some of the team's recent activities. The team's charges focus around making DSM operational within the Soil and Plant Science Division and the National Cooperative Soil Survey. So our work has revolved around creating a framework to support DSM methods in soil survey through development of standards, training, support, and delivery. The DSM focus team is currently structured with two subteams one with a local focus to support soil survey offices and others engaged in DSM projects at the local or regional scale, providing capacity building and project support and development of standards. The other subteam is focused at a national level and working toward continuous soil property maps for the nation. As mentioned on the previous slide, the practitioner subteam is focused on capacity building through training and project support and development of standards. This subteam also supports popular monthly discussions on a variety of DSM related topics, which are open to everyone. If you're interested in joining us, you can contact me or Jessica Phillip. I'm going to spend a few minutes now focusing on updates to the raster soil survey standards and the project mentoring program. Recently, we have drafted clarification for raster soil surveys that will be proposed additions to the existing raster product standards in the National Soil Survey Handbook, Part 648. Raster soil surveys are class-based DSM-derived raster products that contain similar information on map units or components as the Sergo product. We are proposing five levels for raster soil surveys based on intensity of field investigation or the amount of supporting documentation you have, class imbalance, which addresses the number of observations available per map unit or component you're trying to model, map unit kind, so complexes, single components, etc the spatial resolution you are working at for modeling. So are you working with data that has five meter or 30 meter spatial resolution? These all affect the overall accuracy you can achieve in your final map. The levels are conceptually similar to orders of mapping for the Sergo vector product and are meant to provide additional information for each published raster soil survey and support project planning. This table provides details for each proposed raster soil survey level and serves as a preliminary key. Level one products have the highest documentation levels, highest working spatial resolution, and highest level of accuracy. These products might be developed for special projects where user need for detailed information is high. In contrast, level five raster soil survey products have the lowest documentation levels coarse working spatial resolution, and lowest accuracy levels. These products might be developed where access is limited, high resolution raster data products are not available for modeling, and there is not a high interpretive need for detailed information. A couple of things to note here. Raster soil survey map unit kind is currently being worked on to adapt the current understanding of map unit kind to raster soil survey products. The publication standard for spatial resolution is still 10 meters for raster soil surveys, but the working resolution may vary as indicated here. Our practitioner subteam also, also supports the project mentoring program, which has been active for just over a year now. We are currently supporting five projects, both update and initial, across the country. This program is focused on building capacity with offices engaged in digital soil mapping projects with the goal of publishing a raster soil survey. Offices can submit a request 
to the focus team for a mentor, and we match a mentor to the project based on project scope and needs. More information can be found on the focus team website. I'd like to highlight a couple of our current mentoring projects in the National Forests of Idaho on the next few slides. The Chalice National Forest is an initial soil survey project that is part of an approximately 10.5 million acre complex of unmapped forests in central Idaho. This area is gold for completion as part of the Soils 2026 initiative. The Chalice National Forest Project is managed out of the Idaho Falls, Idaho Soil Survey Office, but also involves staff from the Dillon, Montana Soil Survey Office. Project support is being provided by the U.S. Forest Service, GTAC, and the DSM focus team. The project staff has been excelling at independently applying DSM methods in their mapping workflow with guidance from their mentor. They have successfully used DSM methods for developing a sampling design for field work and for creating landform and climate models that will be used to inform the soil map unit and component model. We've been impressed with how they've dived in and are really going for it. To the west of the Chalice National Forest within the same large complex of forests in Idaho is the Payette National Forest. This project is being managed out of the Moscow, Idaho Soil Survey Office with support from U.S. Forest Service GTAC and the DSM focus team. Mentoring for this project started in spring of 2020 and continues as the project crew enters their second field season. Like the crew on the Chalice National Forest Project, the project staff for the Payette are really diving into DSM and finding success with independently applying new methods in their mapping workflow with support from their mentors. They have used DSM methods to design a field sampling plan for both field seasons and to produce some preliminary models for soil properties, which will inform the soil map unit and component model. One example is a model to predict presence of volcanic ash, which, is, which has significant interpretive value in this area. Future plans for mapping of the Idaho forest complex include bringing the Brain Trust together next year for a DSM field week that will involve all three offices engaged in the mapping and members of the DSM focus team. The focus of the field week will be to explore a process for combining the individual forest models to add consistency to the final raster soil survey products. Our continuous properties subteam is focused on producing nationwide soil property maps, starting with 12 key soil properties at six depth intervals, including uncertainty. This is a diverse team with members from across the NCSS who have an interest in exploring the development and application of this type of soil information product. We are currently testing methods and a workflow for a set of 100 meter resolution property maps for CONUS. We are in the process of developing the 30 meter covariate set and we'll move to those properties, property maps for CONUS next. Members of the team, including Colby Brungard and Joe Brem from, the, from New Mexico State University, Travis Nauman from the USGS, and Dylan Bodet, Stephen Roker, Jason Nemechek, and Bob Dobos from NRCS have been involved with the development of an R-based raster interpretations engine, which I will focus on for the last few slides of the talk. The goal of the interpretations engine is to run interpretations outside of NASIS and with a variety of input data. Of course, we were focused on raster data inputs, but the engine was designed to be flexible for other types of data. The target set of interpretations were determined by the working group and selected based on most popular in web soil survey and a diversity in the type of interpretation. The results of this work can be found in an R package available on GitHub and were presented in a recent National Soil Survey Center webinar. As mentioned, we were focused on testing raster data inputs, 
mainly continuous property maps like the ones shown here. The intention is to facilitate the use and application of the anticipated nationwide soil property maps the team is working toward. We want to make the property maps relevant for conservation activities and land managers. Here are some results from the interpretations engine for hydrologic soil group and soil vulnerability index. The raster data inputs are shown in the upper left of the slide and include property maps derived with DSM methods, DEM derivatives, and SERGO derivatives. Input layers were fed into the algorithms for hydrologic soil group and vulnerability index in the R interpretations engine and produced raster-based interpretive maps shown in the lower right of the slide. The results are promising and provide a great starting point for generating a complete library of interpretations from raster input. That concludes my update from the DSM focus team. Thank you for listening.